Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we got a very special guest, White Sox Dave. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm very happy with what the White Sox are doing in, in the draft. I couldn't be happier, honestly. And uh, it's a good day. I'm about to go for a run and eat some dinner and enjoy the rest of the evening. Perfect. Sounds great. Yeah, so um, let's kick it off. As you mentioned, the White Sox have been making a lot of big moves, but let's, I'm going to talk about specific games in the past. Now, I've been fortunate enough to attend three of – or two of maybe the, the best games in White Sox history in the, um, in the 2008 blackout game 163 against mm -hmm. the Flins, um, and then Mark Burley's perfect game as well. Um, now, is there a, a – not it doesn't have to be a White Sox game, but a baseball game um, that – you attended that you um really consider uh memorable yeah i was at the scotty pods walk off in uh in the world series game two uh that's the reason actually i didn't um i didn't end up playing varsity football it was my sophomore year and i got called up for the playoffs for football and i went to a good good high school football program we at Warmville South and at the time we were winning like nothing but state championships but baseball is always my first love obviously a huge White Sox fan and um I, I I got called up for the playoffs and it was just to be a scout team basically a blocking dummy and a bunch of my friends did too and we had practice and my dad got the World Series tickets and he's like hey you got to skip practice so I told my coach I'm like hey I'm, I'm gonna miss practice I'm going to the World Series game he's like you better not be going to the world series you got to be at practice i'm like absolutely not so like that was that was basically it for me with with football because i didn't i, I love football but i didn't like playing as much as i liked watching it but um if like i could go back i wouldn't change a thing about it so i i skipped i didn't skip the practice i, I let them know but uh, i figured i'd be in the doghouse going into summer camp and everything uh, before varsity football, so I just ended up not playing and focusing on baseball. But yeah, the, I mean, being at the Scotty Pods walk off, that was I'll, obviously I'll never forget it. Yeah, yeah, um, that's, I would have skipped practice for that too any day. Yeah, we um we were both we were both very young at that point, but I I do remember um when when we did win in two thousand five, and that was just it was a crazy experience, and I'm hoping that we can get that get that feeling. Yeah, I think I think we will have that again soon. Yeah. Uh, so my next question is really just a personal question about yourself. Uh, so how did you get involved in Barstool Chicago? Because I'm a huge fan. I listen to every Redline radio. Saw the new one coming out today. I'll definitely be catching that later tonight. Um, so it goes back to college. Uh, my buddy, a high school friend of mine and I, we started a blog. Uh, he went to IU and I went to North Central out in April where I, where I played baseball. We, we played John Carroll when I was in college and everything. Yeah. And um, – it was just kind of a like it was a fun thing that we didn't ever take too seriously but we would just basically it was kind of like a diary of our college experience but then we'd mix in sports and um my buddy actually portnoy reached out to him about starting barstool chicago but he was at like kelly school of business and he was walking into a really nice finance job as soon as he graduated college but i stuck with it and uh, they hired Big Cat, and they're like, hey, we need sports bloggers. Do you want to come write? I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Like, love Barstool. And this was when it was, like, primitive and everything. And there was only a handful of employees total, like, maybe seven or eight of them. And I was only 23 or so um, when it was, like, officially. And then, obviously, the years passed. Uh, Big Cat was out here for the first three years. Then moved out to New York to, uh, when we originally got purchased. And then – uh, like as time went on, they, they hired us all full time and restarted Barstool Chicago. So it's been a weird world. I never in a million years thought I'd be here. Yeah. Um, I, I, like if you yeah. asked, like asked me back in college or anything, I'd be like, no, I'll be working a desk job somewhere working, you know, in a, in a scouting department, which was my original goal after college was to work for a, for a pro team. Yeah. Uh, it's something, it's awesome. I listen to it all the time. Uh, me and my dad, when we had to drive down to Cleveland to pack up my dorm room, we listened to the uh, Jeffrey Jordan and the Cole Komet. That's great, yeah. Which mm -hmm. was one of the most awesome things I've ever listened to. My dad doesn't really know about Barstool, but I was like, hey, you got you to listen to this. And he, he was blown away. Love hearing that. Yeah, it's, uh, I think part of our, like, our allure, I guess you could put it, is that none of us are, like, polished at what we do. Exactly. And we're just like kind of normal dudes, like, you know, living it up, 
and having fun, but uh, we can hold good conversation, and I think that's why people like it. Oh yeah, it's it's not like ESPN where you're soup and you have to right, exactly whatever. Exactly, wants. it's like you get the real opinions, which I've always really liked. Like you get the opinions of like actual athletes. You see how they function outside of sports, and I've mm-hmm. always thought that's been awesome. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so um, you mentioned a little bit um, about how uh, Portnoy reached out to your, to your buddies. And um, sticking with that, we, we did some research. We looked back, and we saw Portnoy's pizza reviews in Chicago. Now, he mm-hmm. gave key quads a 7-4, Lou Malnati's an 8-2, and Giordano's an 8-4. In your opinion, what's the best pizza in Chicago? Best pizza? All right, so in Chicago City Limits, it's tough. I would say it's a toss up between Phil's on 35th street and uh Vito and Nick's way on the far South side. It's at like Pulaski and one eighteenth or something. Yeah. I've heard about um, both are awesome and they're a little different from each other, but my favorite pizza is out in Warrenville where I grew up it's super similar to Vito and Nick's. I would, it's Al's pizza. It's out in Warrenville. Um, they've been on Chicago's best. They won a ton of awards. It's and like, my thing is like, I hate, I don't hate, I guess it doesn't really bother me too much, but like people assume like all we eat is deep dish and that's not the case. Like I like yeah. thin crust bar pizza, you know, and yeah. that's, and that's what Al's pizza out in Warrenville is. But, um, it'd be one of those three. It, it'd be Al's then Vito and Nick's and then Phil's probably for me. But like, I'm, I don't really eat Lou Malnati's or Giordano's too often, but if I do eat deep dish, it'll be Pequod's. Yeah. Yeah. I like Pequod's. I like the burnt crust. Yeah. yeah. Pequod's uh, is good. I always, I always tell people from we, uh, our spring break trip for John Carroll lacrosse this year was we came uh, to Chicago and we played Illinois Wesleyan uh, and Aurora University. And um, we stopped at uh, D'Agostino's on Southport and Addison. And um, everyone was like going for the deep dish right away. I'm like, listen, guys, like Chicago is known for deep dish, but the thin crust, that's where it's at, too. You can't just sleep on that. For sure. For sure. D'Agostino's is good pizza, too. Mm-hmm. I like the Augustinos. Yeah, my parents actually owned a pizza restaurant for years. Uh, it was up in, uh, do you know where Michigan City is? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, my parents, I lived there for a while, and we ran a restaurant called The Treehouse. So that's, that was our place. We, Chicago sports bar and everything, pizza place, so. Good bar pizza. That, those are the best places for pizza. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So my next question, uh, I'm, I, I'm one of the biggest Bears fans around, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm – Probably one of the only people that's a Trubisky believer still. His brother goes to John Carroll. I, I've always been a big fan, like, when they drafted him. So, what's your opinion, Trubisky or Foles? I mean, at this point, you might as well just ride or die with Trubisky, I think. Nope. It's, it's sinker. And, and I, there's, a, there's a, a, a part of me that's a believer still, too. I mean, even though I know he probably won't end up being any good ever. But there's part of me that sees his like raw athleticism and his arm, his arm strength, which are you know top of the line, and thinks that maybe something will click for him. But at this point, like if if they don't make a run, and I'm not just talking playoffs, I'm taking like a run, then Nagy's probably out, Pace is probably out, and they're just gonna start from scratch again. So if I'm Nagy and Pace, I'm sinking and swimming with Mitch. I mean that that will end up being what makes or breaks them. Uh, as a front office, that is, and as a coaching staff. I mean, not not as much on on Nagy because he didn't draft. He wasn't here when the, when Trubisky was drafted. That was Fox. But Pace is like he. If Pace is gone, then whoever comes in to replace him is going to want a new head coach. That's his guy. So the whole cycle is just going to start again. So that's what I'm doing if I'm if I'm them. I'm I'm just riding or dying with with Mitch. I'm the same way. I I wasn't like when they were in the free agency. I thought they would be getting a Cam Newton, someone like that. Mm-hmm. I thought would be just a difference. I don't know if Foles is that much different, but I don't know. I'm still a Trubisky believer, and we'll just have to wait and see. Guess we will. Hopefully, there's a season. I'm, I think we'll be there. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm unfortunately I'm well, not unfortunately, but I'm not a Bears fan. My dad was uh, born and raised in uh, New York, so I'm a Giants fan. So I'm, I'm struggling with a little QB issues myself, but I'm buying into Daniel, uh, Daniel Jones right Daniel now. Daniel Jones is a stud. I saw him play quite a bit in college because Duke would play Northwestern, and I saw him play twice at Northwestern. He was very good. I, he had a good year last year too. So 
Uh, I, I, I would be, I would be excited for what the Giants are doing, um, at least at the quarterback position right now. Yeah, no, but um, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna move back to some baseball here now. Obviously, last night the that will be draft happened. The Tigers and the Royals both had top five picks, and in my opinion, the Tigers and the Royals may have snagged two of the best players in the draft. Um, but the White Sox also snagged uh, Garrett Crochet, which was a great pick. Um, what were your reactions to the White Sox pick along with the Royals and the Tigers pick? So I know Arizona State's head coach. Uh, his name is uh, Tracy Smith. Everybody calls him Skip. And he's, uh, he, told us about, he told me about a year, a little over a year ago now, about a year and a half ago, that uh, he's – so I, I got to know ASU center fielder who was drafted by the Giants last year in the first round. He was like 17th overall. And I thought that kid was a stud. He's like, wait till you see his Torkelson kid. He's going to go first overall next year. So I've been following Torkelson forever. And he's just going to, he's going to mash for the next, you know, decade plus. He's, he's an unbelievable hitter. Um, then the Royals, was that Lacey? Yeah, they took him. Yeah, I, I don't know as much about him. But, I mean, just watching his, his YouTube, I mean, left, left-handed pitcher, he's, he's freaky good. So... But, I mean, you never know with pitchers. There's obviously a lot more variance. Um, and that goes to exactly what the White Sox did. They drafted a guy that has as high a ceiling as anybody, any pitcher in the draft. And, but what concerns me is injury. If they can keep him healthy, he'll be an awesome pitcher. That, I mean, he's got good control. He's got three really good pitches. And he, he could theoretically, if, there was, if they were playing games right now, they could insert him into the bullpen or the back end of the rotation. And I think he would hold his own just fine after he, like, shook out any nerves or whatever. But he, he's got the raw stuff to get big league hitters out as we speak. And they think he's going to be a starter. And I, you, got, you can't do anything but trust them. So I, I have no reason to, like, hate the pick at all. I would have personally preferred Mick Abel, the high school pitcher, the right-hander. But, uh, I mean, like, it, if, if they think that Crochet has the highest ceiling – that they can work with his funky mechanics, then, you know, more power to him. That's, that's who they rolled with. So that's who I'll roll with. Yeah, exactly. You know, seeing, I mean, just seeing his, his height and his weight, you know, um, it's just, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. So I'm, I'm very excited for it. Yeah. He's, he's, I mean, it's, he's going to make hitting very uncomfortable for whoever's in the batter's box against him. Yeah, that draft is a pretty good one. Uh, you know, Ed Howard gets drafted to the mm -hmm. Cubs, which I thought was pretty cool. Good. Sox. Yeah, great story. Yeah, yeah, that was a really cool story. He, uh, we, we actually are in contact with him, see if we can get a little talk with him, but we'll see. Cause, you know, yeah, he's busy as shit right now. We're going to interview him next week, but I'm not even bother, not even going to bother reaching out because I know he's got so much on his plate right now. Yeah, one of, uh, uh, one of my – good friends of John Carroll knows him and it was like I was like hey man like can we just talk to him for a little bit and he was like oh man he's getting bombarded yeah they all are right now oh yeah but so going on more baseball so I'm a Cubs fan and my family is split like 50 50 like Sox Cubs because my dad's from Beverly and mm -hmm. he, worked, he ended up working for the Cubs when he was 16 so that's he became a big Cubs fan then uh so what does the rivalry mean to you like the red line the red line rivalry I mean, I, I hope it gets to the point, like, obviously the Cubs have all the bragging rights in the world right now because they've been good for, you know, five or six years or whatever it's been. And the White Sox haven't, but I love what the White Sox are doing. And I think this decade is going to be the best decade in Chicago baseball that we've seen as a, as a whole. I'm talking White Sox and Cubs that maybe ever, you know, I'm, I don't know a ton about like, you know, I'm not talking about 40, 50, 60 years ago, but as far as like, since I've been alive, it will undoubtedly, we'll see the most wins on both sides of town for the next decade that we've ever seen. So it, it means a lot to me. I know it doesn't mean as much to Cubs fans, but I, I can't wait until the White Sox are, you know, year in and year out right there with the Cubs or, or, or have a better record than them or go deeper in the playoffs than they do at season's end. Cause I know it's going to piss off Cubs fans. And I think, uh, Chicago's a great city when you can, you know, root for the Bears one day and then the next day you and your best friends are going at it because one's a Cubs fan, one's a Sox fan. That's what makes Chicago awesome. Oh, yeah. Let me. This guy makes I, – I will never hate the Sox, but this guy makes me want to hate the Sox. He is the biggest Sox fan I've ever met. <laughs> and uh, a couple of our other friends just 
love the Sox. So I know what it's like to, to you know, to be a part of that. And it's been awesome growing up. Because growing up, I when I grew up in Indiana, really, uh, no one really cared. I grew up until I was 15, and no one really cared. But when I get to Ignatius, it's like, what are you, Cubs or Sox? And it's like, yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's intense. It is. And, that, and that's like my favorite part about Chicago is that rivalry. Yeah, it's awesome. I think it's great. Yeah, no. Um, so obviously all the signs are pointing to an upward trend for the White Sox. But realistically, when do you see this team being a playoff team? This year. I mean, it's going to be a weird year. We're absolutely going to have baseball in some form. I know it's not going to be what we're accustomed to, but they're, they're ready to go. I talked to, you know, a decent amount of the players and, and they're, they're ready to just not, I don't want to say shock the world. They're just so hungry to win. Cause a lot, like guys like Carlos are on, like they've been here for four years now and they've done nothing but lose. And he's, and these guys are competitors. They hate losing, you know, they're paid to win. And, and with, and with the free agency signings, the trades they made this winter and the, and the guys they've had a, all a year older and all a year healthier, then there's no reason that this team can't win the, the AL central. And, they believe that they they expect playoffs, and if the team expects playoffs, we should expect playoffs. That's how I see it. Yeah, that uh, interview with Lucas Giolito was really cool. I thought. Or he yeah, was, he's a he's an awesome kid. Oh, awesome, he, awesome dude. I really like Giolito, even being a Cubs fan. I just think he's awesome. He's a nasty pitcher, and seems like a really good guy. And he I'm, is. I'm definitely like I'm a I'm a Cubs fan, but I'm definitely hoping the Sox do well. I think the city just does better when both teams are are in competition. Yeah, absolutely. And like if, you know, we ever saw a World Series between the two, just think of how much fun the city would be. Oh, my God, it burned down. It would burn to the ground. And I, I would love to be here for that, you know. It would be awesome. Imagine taking the red line from, from 35th all the way up to uh, Addison. Yep. <laughs> it's, awesome. uh, it's a dream of mine. Yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a dream of mine since uh, my brother who's a Cubs fan uh, since, since we ever started uh, – so we ever started uh, just uh, hitting heads with each other. It's been mm -hmm. uh, it's always been bragging rights, but I'm I'm ready for change. Ready for some change. So I'm gonna go into a couple things you guys talk about in your pet podcast. So rumor has it you can throw 90 miles per hour. Uh, with the crow hop I have, but I'm getting older, so it's it's getting slower each year. But when I was, you know, high school, college, yeah. So you're you still hitting the. Uh, the what's it the gun at the uh white oh yeah the oh yeah I saw you at the, uh, that's like my favorite thing to do <laughs> um but yeah I, I it's i can i'm like still low 80s but when i was playing i was i was off of mount i was like 87 and then when i would crow hop i would be low 90s that was like the only thing i was good at was throwing and you played at north central yeah nice. i played at north central if i would have had a better senior year and in high school, I would have played at a higher level, but uh, I started off the season really slow. So all the uh, bigger schools that were looking at me, they uh, backed off, which is no big deal. Shit happens, but um, it is what it is, I guess, you know? Yeah. Now, that was uh, my, my next question is going to stick with your baseball career here. Now, everyone who follows Barstool knows that Dave Portnoy a self-proclaimed, like he peaked already at uh, age 12. Do you think right now that you could strike him out? Oh, yeah, without question. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who's that, Portnoy? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's unquestionable. Yeah, I could absolutely strike him out. All right. Last year, you and Portnoy had some scandal about the, uh, what was it, the Yankees game? Oh, yeah, it was – the so I had a wedding out in Arizona and I was leaving I think it was on a Wednesday for it but I had to be there Thursday I just want to get there a day early so I could mess around out there um I was in the wedding so I got a call from Big Cat on Tuesday morning saying I had to be out in New York City uh Tuesday night to do this to do that Yankees game I'm like Dan I'm leaving for Arizona tomorrow morning for a wedding that I'm in like I can't do this and he's like see if you can push it back so the original plan was, and I had a ton of family shit to do, like to prepare. So I had to drive my car off of my dad's. I had to pick up my cousin, like out in St. Charles, whole bunch of just like logistics, stupid stuff. And so I ended up, 
I ended up moving my flight from Chicago to Arizona uh, back a day. I was going to fly out Thursday morning, and then I was going to leave for New York Wednesday morning after I got all the stuff done. So I get to the airport nice and early, and uh, my flight got delayed because the plane the, the plane in Chicago – was delayed in Charlotte, North Carolina or some shit. They had like weather delays in Charlotte and that's where the plane was coming from. So I ended up getting there in like the third inning and Ellie was doing it and Portnoy was like, yeah, you got to go home. I'm like, all right, I don't want to be here anyway. So I went home and I basically slept at O'Hare before getting right back on the plane and going into Arizona. It was, it was not a fun few days. No, I, I remember seeing a video of you during those couple of days and all the caption was a uh, White Sox day has had a couple of tough days. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was not fun. Like I was all over the country, like Chicago to New York to Chicago to Arizona to Chicago within like four days. That's rough. Yeah, I was I was like I was miserable, so it wasn't fun. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's that's a crazy uh, crazy crazy events right there. Now, uh, my last question here is, you know, obviously, Soxtober twenty twenty has been talked about for 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 a couple months now. Um, but people, people doubt the team here and there, in your opinion, what do you think is the only thing, what do you think is, is holding back the White Sox from a world series championship? Uh, personnel wise, um, honestly, they have the large majority of their lineup and their staff set. I would love to see them go all in. And, and just sign that superstar. Mookie Betts is going to be a free agent after this year. You already know what payroll you have for the next five years. Sink $300 million into him. Like, and he's like the final piece you need to, com- to be a contender for the next decade. That's what, that's what I would like to see them do. Um, but other than that, like, I, I'm very, very – and I don't want to say content because that means like they don't have any work to do. I'm happy with where they are right now. I'm very happy. I couldn't be happier. But go and get that that superstar stud free agent, and go win multiple championships. So, um, but I, I mean, and talking to you know guys like Giolito and Radon and those guys like and Dan Palka, Dylan Cease, like they're all ready to go. They they are all on the same page. They want nothing but to win. They're an awesome group of people, like off the field, just normal guys. Like there's no attitudes or or bad seeds on the team that I'm aware of, at least. And I, I, I couldn't be happier. I'm very excited. And of course, go figure the for like the first year you're, we're really expecting them to contend. We have a global pandemic wipe out at least bare minimum half the season. So, yeah. um, but I mean, it, it, we still have a lot of time to, to win and, and they're, they're going to win maybe as early as this year. Who knows? Who knows? I, that that's the dream, but who knows, as you said, yeah, this guy wrote uh, Soxtober 2020 on everyone's door in his whole floor in his dorm room this year. Uh, All on their door, Soxtober 2020. They woke up in the morning, he's like, who is, what is Soxtober and who is doing this? No, now they know. Now they know. Exactly. Who the art, graffiti artist is. Yeah, right. <laughs> and now I, I have one last question just about, uh, so obviously the NHL said they're back. I don't know if you're a big hockey guy, but. I was I'm real not. happy when this happened. I played hockey in high school, so this this was huge for me. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, they it sounds like they did the opposite of what baseball is doing, and I don't know a thing about hockey. I couldn't name more than, like, unless you're on the Blackhawks, I couldn't name more than maybe 15 players in the league. Uh-huh. But um, the it sounds like, I mean, they did it right. They As soon as they were able to put a plan together, they you know, the owners and the players met got an agreement in place or at least in principle and they're ready to go. So I, I wish baseball would act as pragmatically as they did. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Uh, that's really all I got besides uh, what is your favorite sandwich at JP Graziano's? I live right down the street. I, I got to go the uh, Mr. G's with uh, I go hot muffaletta now. And I know this is kind of sacrilege. Ooh. All right. But um, I think I like the muffaletta better than Jardinera at this point. Cause oh. it's, it spreads easier and it tastes the same. Like it, it, the, the, the flavor is, is basically identical, but on a sandwich, it spreads and it's not like falling out with like the olives and carrots and everything. Just my opinion, but that's what I go with. That's, that's a good point. I mean, I, I always have the, I always have the problem with Jardinera falling out, but that's, I gotta try that. That's, I will be, I will be trying that. 
Yeah, I live I live down the street. Uh, on Randolph, the one on Randolph. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Funny That's hours awesome. though. Funny hours. Yeah, because they, they refuse to uh, use two day old bread, and I respect that. Yeah, I do. I do too. After owning a restaurant. Yeah, I mean, they could make a lot more money if they if they you know didn't didn't refuse to use two day old bread, but I respect that. They only use the freshest of fresh. So that's why we love them. That's why they're the best. Thanks. I'll, maybe I'll have to send you guys a couple sandwiches. <laughs> you should. <laughs> What's the address? No, no don't, don't worry about that. We, uh, they take care of us over there. All right. Perfect. Well, Hey man, I just want to say, I really love, uh, Barstool Chicago and it's been great listening. It's like, when I like need to talk about Chicago sports, throw that on, listen, you guys take the words right out of my mouth. Um, if you guys need any help down there ever, let me know. I'm happy to help. We appreciate hearing that. We always do. So thank you guys for having me on anytime. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. Tune in next time for another great interview and we'll catch you later. All right. Yeah. One, thank you. Thank you once again.